So first of all, uh, thank you very much everybody for still being here. It's 5.30, it's uh, hot and the jazz music is already playing outside. So I really appreciate it that you're still here. Um, if the music uh, plays again, maybe I start to sing. Or maybe don't, you don't want to hear that. So better, I will start my talk about uh, an initiative that we kind of uh, funded to leverage the power of open data and FOSS GIS to improve expenditure in the development cooperation sector. My name is uh, Johannes Schieler and I work for KFW Development Bank. What, what do we do in development cooperation? Well, we are, we are not driven by profit. We provide financial and technical assistance to developing countries. So I work in a bank. We provide loans and grants to uh, achieve the SDGs, basically. So we finance projects. And my colleague Gunnar, who's from GIZ in the back, they are trying to provide technical information to improve projects. And we are guided, or should be guided, by the principles of uh, digital development. So one of these principles is to use open standards, open data, and so on. You know these topics. And it's very hard to implement that in our institutions, to be honest. And we are just taking the first steps, because our institutions so far have worked very differently as public institutions. So our goal is to, to increase our capacities and get these things going. Um, why do we use geodata for our projects, or why is it interesting? Well, from geodata you can derive a lot of information that we cannot get from our projects. So you can see our normal project data collection here. We start at the beginning of the project. If we are lucky, oftentimes people don't collect data at the beginning of the project. And then you cannot draw a conclusion what really happened on the ground and whether we achieve impacts, for example, in the conservation sector. Um, geodata provides us the opportunity to use data in the planning phase already during monitoring and also evaluation. So now the music is starting. I'm not going to make true on my promise. <laughs> um, we have two projects uh, that we already open source. One is called Oscar. It's a web platform for um, health services in Nepal. Uh, and the nice thing about it is that it's scaled out now for other countries. So it's kind of a, a um, proof of concept that if you produce an open source solution, you can reutilize it. And then we have produced a package, it's called the Map Me Biodiversity Package, which kind of helps you to do uh, conservation analysis. So it kind of pr processes a lot of uh, conservation data sets automatically, downloads the data, tiles the data, processes it, and is very efficient because it applies parallelization strategies. And it's mainly targeted as analysts. So we use it ourselves, but we also provide it to the public. One of the things that we can put out from this, from this package, for example, is this kind of analysis where we assess uh, the threat levels in protected areas in our partnering countries. And we cannot only clearly spot where the hotspots of uh, uh, forest cover loss is and where we should engage more, but we can also map that to our portfolio and then try to engage in those areas that are most urgently in need and where we are currently not active. Um, yeah, one of the challenges that we face, and I think a lot of open source initiatives and projects face those challenges, is how do we find a sustainable governance structure or model, right? And the way that we are approaching it right now in our institutions with different projects is this, is this so-called concept of, of public goods. So here we're talking about digital public goods, but you can think of public goods as, as anything that the government can provide and that should serve everybody's needs. Um, but it's a very adventurous way, and I, I would be very happy to talk to others about their uh, experience, how to yeah, govern these projects and find more sustainability. Thank you very much. <laughs>